Uh, I'm Louis, I'm part of the Gemma-Free post-training team. My presentation is called uh, Robust Reinforcement Learning with Human Feedback for Final Element for Gemma-Free, which is quite the mouthful, and hopefully along the next slides you get a clear idea of uh, what I'm talking about. So what is uh, what we call RLHF, uh, for a quick introduction for those of you who don't know. So um, basically what you just saw in the previous presentation is that in the pre-training phase, uh, we are mostly doing a teacher's imitation. And at some point, you need to fly with your own wings and to be able to produce your own answers, uh, and you will receive feedback over those, and you will improve. And that's the goal of reinforcement learning, basically. You will receive a reward, and you will try to climb up that reward. So for this, our LHF is a two-stage process. Uh, first, we will train a reward model, uh, and the goal for this is to capture the human preferences. So for this, we have access to a set uh, of uh, prompts and two different responses. And a human rater will say, I prefer response A or I prefer response B. And in doing so, uh, we indicate what is human preferences. This is important because uh, when you have a pre-trained model, it's mostly uh, like, a, I would say, a parrot. It's used to predicting next words. Uh, and so it doesn't really capture uh, what humans intend, but just like what is a distribution of language at large. When we do alignment, we want to align uh, on criteria such as safety, like you want the right amount of chattiness, you want the right vibe for your model, and this is what alignment stands for and what these human preference data is used for. Once you have your reward model, you're going to plug it into the reinforcement learning stage. So in there, you will take an initial model, uh, so for instance, a pre-training one, and uh, by doing RL, you will try to maximize the reward that is given uh, by the reward model. I want to insist here that uh, our LHF, uh, with human feedback, is mostly used to improve on our chat abilities. Okay? Um, and RL can actually be used with different kinds of rewards. And as Joanne will tell you next, uh, if you want to improve on math and coding, you will use a different one. But here, it's the reward model that gives uh, like the signal that improves our model. So, um, two-stage process. First, train the RLM, then plug in it into RL. And the main issue with RLHF is what we call reward hacking. So the idea is that the reward model is an imperfect proxy for the human preferences. First, like it's a numerical uh, annotator that will say, OK, it's uh, plus 1.5 for this answer for that particular prompt. Um, and typically, if you train for an extended period of time, you will uh, see that you can start to hack this imperfect judge. For instance, um, you, the human preferences may be that, OK, uh, over like a short, very targeted answer, I sometimes prefer several paragraphs that explain like several different uh, parts of my answer. Well, the uh, reward model will pick up on that, but it may actually understand, OK, the longer, the better. And so if you train for an extended period of time, you quickly like blow up the amount of the answers that you have, and, and you end up with like things that are way too long for a human. So this is the, the kind of things that I mean by like an imperfect proxy. Like he, it's just learning from the data it has been exposed to, and it's hard to get beyond that. Other examples include two chatty expressions, such as "sure, let's rephrase the entire query," uh, many many bullet points, uh, language switching to English, uh, these kind of things. So our goal in RL uh, HF is to limit reward hacking, uh, to be able to train for an extended period of time, and to be able to have finer alignment to the human preferences. So how can we make our LHF more robust to reward hacking? In this presentation, I will insist on two different research principles that we pushed uh, to train uh, Gemma Free. The first one uh, looks into the reward model design, and we will look into the robust reward model via weight averaging or warm striking from the same policy. Then again, <laughs> quite the mouthful. Um, so as I told you in the first part of the presentation, to obtain your reward model, you actually start from a policy. So this is actually a model that uh, could be instruction tune or a model from pre-training, uh, essentially because you want to transfer the general language ability to the ability to judge whether a given answer and prompt uh, is uh, good or not. Um, so you may think, OK, uh, I may take like any initial model. And more than that, you may think, like, OK, the bigger the better. If I take my largest language model with like hundreds of parameters, Hopefully, I will have the reward signal that is less noisy, and I will improve better uh, on uh, the alignment with the human data. <coughs> As it turns out, in our research, we noticed that the most effective solution was to use the same policy that you will like to train into RL. So uh, to repeat a bit on that, basically, you will take the same pre-trained model, you will turn it into a reward model, 
and then you will use that reward model to train the same policy. We think that the intuition behind that must be that using the same policy as the one trained during RL makes the reward model more effective at judging samples from the policy because you're much in distribution with respect to the policy that you are later on going to train. The second item that we can put in question in this uh, thing is the big arrow, the reward modeling. How does that work exactly? If you obtain a reward model, um, this one can be hacked in a certain way. It will pick up certain quirks in your data, and uh, you can easily fool it, for instance, like increasing the sentences way too long. So the simple solution would be, OK, instead of training one reward model, I'm going to train an ensemble of those. And hopefully, it's going to be much harder for a policy later on to be able to fool every single reward model at once, because they will have picked up on different quirks of your data, and they have different ways to be hacked. But the thing is that if you then do RL using like dozens of different reward models, uh, it's really hard to scale. It requires a lot of memory, and it can be a bit slow. So instead, what we did is we use weight averaging. You can actually emulate pretty well uh, the properties of your ensemble of reward models by just averaging them into one single big uh, model. So uh, this model, basically, because it's been averaged, it's much more efficient once you start to go out of distribution, and which is typically what happens in RL, because uh, you stray away from your initial policy, so you would tend to generate samples that are further and further away uh, from the uh, data distribution over which the reward model has been trained. So we take the policy that is later trained in RL, uh, we train an ensemble of reward model, we average them to obtain one stronger, more robust. And using this, uh, we can basically train longer. So for reference of this, I direct you to a paper that was published by the team in 2024, exactly on that topic. Uh, next, I'm going to talk about a second research idea, which is improvements over the RL algorithm itself. Uh, so how can we use the reward model that we just trained uh, to uh, obtain better alignment? So as I told you, uh, the reward model is plugged into this RL phase and provides a reward, and then we try to maximize that reward uh, with the uh, policy. So how does that work exactly? Typically, you will ask a question to your model uh, in training. So what's the capital of France? And then you can obtain different answers. One answer could be like, it's Paris. And one other answer, which is less factual, but maybe more catchier and has the right like markdown, is it's Marseille, baby. And then you will use a reward model to provide a signal that indicates if one of those answers is better. So like for the first one, it's plus 1.3. And for the second one, because it's so catchy, it's actually plus 1.5. So we have numerical scores. And the thing is that down the training, we're going to obtain this for like thousands and thousands of completions upon prompts. And at some point, the uh, reward model will necessarily go out of distribution. And then it's just going to be outputting numbers with high confidence, which is something that we all know in ML happens a lot, saying, of course, for this data point that I've been never exposed to in my distribution, it's plus 2.7, trust me. So it can become noisy, and that can lead to reward hacking. So one solution that we propose and that we leverage for Gemma Free uh, is not to focus so much on the reward signal in itself, but focus on the ordering statistics. So the idea is that what's important in RL is not this exact reward signal, but it's the contrastive nature uh, of what you're doing. So like you ask a prompt, you have different answers, and you're interested in knowing what is the best answer, and you want to push that answer over the other one. And for this particular task, it may be actually more robust not to use the reward signal itself, but just the order. The first is better than the second, and better than the third, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So focusing on response ordering makes us more robust to a potentially noisy reward signal, especially when going out of distribution for a long training. And if you're interested in this, there's another paper published by the team in 2024 on that subject. So in conclusion, how can we make uh, LHF more robust to reward hacking? Uh, in this presentation, I showed two uh, of the ways that we used. One is the uh, design of more robust reward models, less hackable uh, through weight averaging, mostly. Uh, and we noticed that those were most efficient uh, when uh, training started from the same distribution, and improvements of the RL algorithm itself. Combined, these techniques allow us to train the model over an extended period of time without incurring reward hacking. And that's actually one of the things that is responsible for this final alignment that is actually in the top, top of chat capabilities, mostly translated in the good LMC scores that we obtain, because we align well to what the user intends when they're asking a prompt. 
So thank you very much for your attention.